liabilities at par or dollar for dollar. Uh, this is essential uh, for bank deposits functioning as money that can be redeemed even in periods of stress. In this regard, a number of questions have arisen in the stable coin realm about asset quality. Let me use Tether as an example. Uh, can you tell us if Tether is backed by a dollar or cash equivalent? My understanding from their public documents that they post is that their reserve assets include assets that are not um, credit risk free. Okay. Uh, does Tether have investments in Chinese commercial paper or any other illiquid assets that might threaten uh, the redeemability of otherwise stable coin? Um, I understand they hold commercial paper of private firms, which is not a credit free asset. Okay. Uh, has Tether been uh, issued that is not fully collateralized? Um, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, has, has Tether been issued uh, that is not to totally or fully collateralized? Um, I, I expect that is the case. I do not, they are not regulated. They, they um, publish data, um, but based on what I understand, they may not be able to deliver a dollar. A full, they are not fully collateralized under all conditions. Okay, thank you. Uh, do you have concerns about Tether's opaqueness and its impact on consumers? I do have concerns about the opacity of the reserve assets of stablecoin issuers. That is, in fact, one of the reasons for our first risk that we identified the run risk and the potential that could have um, for other short term funding markets if investors were to become concerned about the quality of the assets underlying the stablecoin. Uh, as we move forward, I, ho I hope we can find a path that provides for protection of consumers and investors in the stablecoin realm, but, but also permits our economy uh, to realize the benefits of the, the newer innovations. Uh, the president's working group explored regulatory alternatives. Uh, to doing this, the conclusion that the group reached seemed to be that uh, stable coins uh, ought to be look more like banks and deposits, including deposit insurance. Uh, can you share with us the alternative regulatory regimes for providing adequate disclosure that would make clear to consumers how stable coins are not perfect substitutes for cash or bank deposits as they're currently structured anyway? Mm -hmm. So, as um, I mentioned in my testimony, we the IDI proposal that issuers the IDIs really did rely on the flexibility of supervision and regulation under that proposal. That an issuer, a stablecoin issuer that only issued stablecoins for payments and did not make commercial loans like a commercial bank, traditional commercial bank, would be subject to a very different supervisory regime. So I think there's a degree of flexibility within the proposal that we put forward. The PWG report also did not make a statement about deposit insurance. Um, depending on the quality of the assets and the capital and liquidity standards that could be applied to a stablecoin issuer, they may not need deposit insurance. So I think that is um, also a possibility in that within that one framework of IDI, there's a range of ways that could be applied. Okay, and, and, and you've covered part of it already, but I'm wondering what the current administration policy uh, proposal for addressing stable coins is in our financial system. Uh, currently, the PWG report recognizes that there are gaps in the current system, um, that there are securities laws and there are consumer protection laws and there are illicit finance laws to address stable coins and other virtual assets. Um, but there is not regulatory framework at the federal level that builds on state level regulations that would apply to stable coins for as their use of payments by households and businesses um, and financial firms and governments if it became widely used. Well, I thank you for your forthrightness in answering it. And I see my time has expired. I yield back, Madam Chair.